Hey guys, Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. We want to thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network. And if you want to see what we're up to outside of the station, please follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. You can follow the good brother Alex Mercado on Twitter at Mercado21 Alex and on Instagram at Mercado2121. The lovely Nicole Mancha is on all social media platforms at Typing When Tipsy. You can follow the network on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. Our pop culture show, The Good Brothers, on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Our true crime shows on Instagram at Murder Mysteries and More. And of course, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all our videos on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333 or by searching Mercado Airwaves Network. We play video games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. And of course, you could support our network by finding a tier just for you, whether you want early access, you want to be part of polls, you want to win contests prizes by visiting us at patreon.com slash mercado airwaves and we really appreciate it wherever you get your favorite podcast to like rate review and share us and please spread the word for the good brother alex mercado for the lovely nicole mancha i'm mike mercado thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network Hello and welcome in, friends, to another Sports from the Couch here on the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. I want to thank you all so much for making us a part of your day. On today's episode of Sports from the Couch, we tackle the recent firings and forelongs over at WWE. And to talk this conversation, I thought there was nobody else better to bring in than from the good brother himself, the one, the only, Alex Mercado. Alex, thank you so much for joining us here on Sports from the Couch. How are you doing, good brother? I'm doing okay. I wish this was under better circumstances. Why we're talking wrestling, like this isn't definitely a fun topic to talk about, but it's an important topic. It absolutely is. And it's one of these conversations that nowadays you definitely have to put the caveat on. We understand that this kind of stuff is affecting everybody. It's one of these situations where I don't think necessarily our fans here on Mercado Airwaves, Sports from the Couch, Outreach Radio Chicago, whatever we're doing here on the network or outside of the network, that we don't understand or empathize with our fellow man, our neighbors. And it's it's frustrating when I'm trying to have a conversation like this and you have to kind of talk to the other demographic that's telling you, well, like, everybody's losing their jobs and everybody's going through this. And I'm like, yeah, that, yes, you can have multiple thoughts. You can have multiple feelings. And I think that's a very important thing to to point out right away before we have this conversation, because whenever we're here on Sports from the Couch, or we're on the Good Brothers, or we're doing anything that isn't necessarily life or death, but it has to deal with what news or with, with a story that people care about, you do have to take it seriously, and it is a reflection on society. And that's why I thought today's episode of Sports from the Couch was really important to get somebody in who is a fan, but also knowledgeable about inside and outside of the business, and who also has lived in the real world that is going through these crazy times during this global pandemic pandemic that is COVID-19. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, usually what you have me for is TV, movies, pop culture, pundit, and the wrestling when it comes to sports. And, you know, when we talked, I really wasn't into talking about it. And I think the real reason is kind of like you mentioned with Disney or with WWE, it's, you know, these are our role models. These are almost our heroes, our characters that we enjoy and we look up to. And when you see your these corporations that you invest so much time and your heart and soul into do something like the things they've done, it hurts and, and it makes you feel weird and it makes you feel like, do I even want to talk about it? But I agree with you and I turned around thinking, no, we do need to talk about this and it's okay to still have those memories and still look up to these characters and you know these wrestlers that have nothing to do with it. But keeping an open mind of corporations will do these things. So, Alex, before we get into the meat of this conversation, I just want to remind everybody that they could go ahead and follow us all over social media so they can see our reactions lifetime as they're going on. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. You are on Instagram at Mercado2121 and on Twitter at Mercado21. Alex. So I have a few things that we're going to go through, good brother, and I really appreciate you joining us on the show today. So I brought up a couple articles over the last few days. So behind the curtains, it is 8.30 here in the beautiful city of Chicago, 8.30 p.m. on Thursday, April 16th as we are recording this. So I got a few news stories throughout last night and throughout the afternoon, even into this evening, to kind of see the the feeling and the emotion of a lot of different people as this went on. So I'm going to read a few things from from what I've gathered, good brother, and then I really would like to get your opinion on this and kind of go ahead and have a conversation from that. So go ahead and uh, anybody listening will go ahead and I'll give you the, the name of the article, who it was written by, and then you guys can go a little bit deeper into it. But these are some of the things that I grabbed from each one of these. This one first is, 
With WWE layoffs, Vince McMahon retains title as world's largest douche. This comes from Deadspin on April 15th, 2020, right after all the firings. This is by Sam Fells. Last week, McMahon folded the XFL and immediately declared bankruptcy, owing millions upon millions to various interests and leaving them high and dry. It is likely those individuals will see a fraction of what they are owed. Did we mention that McMahon is advising Trump on the economy? Last Friday, McMahon changed his mind and decided that three WWE TV shows, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, would start airing live again, putting the talent, production, and backstage crew at all serious health risk. It is widely believed that McMahon did this to ensure he gets every penny of his TV contracts, as there would have been wiggle room for both NBC Universal and Fox to renegotiate or cancel portions of their deals had WWE continued to air pre-tape shows. It is worth noting that both of these contracts add up to $470 million per year for the WWE. It's hard to fathom how much that could have been lessened given both networks need for programming of any kind. And whatever number you imagine that to be is certainly would have been enough to keep everyone employed and safe. But why do that when you can have every penny and quote, fuck over everyone below you? That's the new American dream. This is from Deadspin. WWE has allowed to return live shows because in one of more ultimate Florida man moments, they were able to secure an essential business tag from the state government. It also happens that this label was bestowed upon the same day that a super PAC ran by Linda McMahon, wife of Vince, and former Trump cabinet member spent $18.5 million on advertising in the states of Florida. So that is from Deadspin. Then I went on and we got on to the next one. This comes, Are we going to talk about it individually? I want to give you the entire timeline and then I want to get your thoughts on how everything kind of broke down and kind of the well, wave of emotions. Kind of hard, sorry, Mike, but it's kind of hard for me because I think the problem is there's so much news out there that I hear a dead spin and I personally don't enjoy those articles because I think you get a lot of smart points mixed in with a lot of ignorant wording and ignorance, uh, tension seeking headlines and articles when I think there's a people out there doing a lot better actually putting the facts out there and not putting their personal opinions and in somebody's personal opinions, them being wrong. So like, look at wrestling sheet. We found out anyone that got released from the contract early is getting their full on 90 day pay, which is more than some businesses are doing. Yeah. And I think that's why it was important to make sure we chrono chronologically put this and how I kind of gathered it together and where it's coming from because this was a wave of emotions and in a time where everybody is at home and that's why I thought it was very important to to really do a justif justification by giving it itself a timeline and then we moved on to this one good brother from Variety this is WWE for Lowe's employees releases multiple stars in coronavirus cost saving measure by Joe Otterson and this is April 16th from this morning of April 16th 2020 WWE is the latest company to announce that it's prolonging a portion of its workforce in response to the economic downturn caused by the ongoing coronavirus. In addition to the forelongs, the sports entertainment company announced Wednesday that it would be reducing compensation for executives and board members, deferring plans to build a new headquarters for at least six months, and releasing multiple on-screen performers and backstage producers. Those released include WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle, Kurt Hawkins, Luke Gallows, and EC3. Backstage producers Shane Helms, Lance Storm, and Fit Finley were also among those released by the company, with Angle having been working as a producer as well since last year. WWE estimates that the moves will lead to a monthly savings of approximately $4 million and a cash flow improvement of $140 million, with most of the latter coming from the decision to delay building the new headquarters. Quote, management continues to believe the fundamentals of the company's business remain strong and that WWE is well positioned to take full advantage of the changing media landscape and increasing value of live sports rights over the long term, WWE said in a statement. News of the reductions come after WWE was deemed an essential business in the state of Florida, which will allow it to continue filming its weekly television shows out of the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, with no audience present despite the current stay-at-home order. WWE's three weekly shows are Monday Night Raw and NXT, both of which air on USA Network, and SmackDown Live, which airs on Fox. WWE is currently in the middle of the first year of its five-year deal with Fox, which is valued at $1 billion. 
total. So that came from us from Variety. And they did mention that in this part that the board members and some of the executives are taking a reduction in their compensation. So it isn't it isn't just one of these moments where only the the talent is being heard. They are doing something when it comes to the board members. And that's why I appreciate everything you do and why we're doing this is you see trash like what, what we just read before Variety and it's like so our job is not to give you our heartfelt opinion. Our job is to give you the facts and what we truly believe on a non-personal level. And I think that's what good media is and Variety did a good job and we're trying to do that job today of we have our viewpoints, but we're going to give you the facts from left and right and let you form your own opinion with enough information that it's an educated opinion instead of just going out and saying they're assholes or they're douchebags. Like there's no room for that kind of journalism right now in this time, I think. And I think Variety showed it off and you show it off all the time talking other sports. You can do it a better way. And I think we're starting to see the cream of the crop rise in that sense. And it continued on. It was a rough day because of the passing of Howard Finkel. And before we continue, we want to make sure we give our our love and obviously our admiration growing up. Everybody loved the way he announces. We all dreamt of it. So, you know, before we continue on this this bad conversation and this dirty ro- world that we're in right now, a shout out. And I know you you feel the same. Yeah, no, Howard Finkel is a legend. And, you know, he's one of those guys. There's not a bad word said about him through all the shoot interviews, through all the shoot bucks. Like, He's loved by all, and you know, like I said, it's a rough week. You know, you already had your WrestleMania kind of shifted a little bit ago, and now you found out, you know, these wrestlers are getting let go, and these producers, and we talk about it. You know, WWE is never going to be the same WWE we remembered as last year. It's all, it's definitely going to need a change, and you know, that's important to recognize. It is, and I think that's why what happened this rest of of the day was kind of a a tough one, you know, and it, it became, it, it, it's just, it's, it's a tough one. And this one is by Justin Tosh, who came from us. Seth Rollins call for unity after WWE firings completely backfires. WWE, which has one confirmed coronavirus case already, has been criticized for the cuts because it was reportedly still expected to turn a profit in 2020, despite running shows without fans at its training center. After taping several shows, including WrestleMania, WWE has returned to live weekly shows after being deemed an essential business in Florida. Vince McMahon, second shot at the XFL, failed as the league filed for bankruptcy. And I think that's a lot of people, they can't get that out of their mind as well, is the 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 falling of the XFL and the fact that that comes and then these firings happen. It is very close. It does have this weird this weird suspicion to it. But sometimes timing is really weird, and I don't know if this is one of those cases where one is because of the other, but I can see where a fan base gets very frustrated and, and their eyebrows raised in a scenario like this. Well, we talked about it, and Ryan Sand goes into great detail where, you know, if you do your research, you find out actually him closing down the NFL actually helped keep on even more for WWE. And if they would had uh, filed for bankruptcy and shut down the XFL when they did, we might have seen an even worse day than we saw yesterday so i think it's interesting like you said where it's such bad timing together but then if you dig deep into the research you're like well actually he did that to protect the WWE, and without that the WWE would have really been in a worse position and finally this comes from us from insider tyler laletta wwe fires dozens of wrestlers and other talent just days after a controversial decision deemed them an essential business in florida and fans are livid with Vince McMahon. In a statement, WWE wrote that the implementation of various short-term cost reductions and cash flow improvement actions including was necessary due to the economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Quote, given the uncertainty of the situation, the company also identified headcounts, reductions, and made the decision to furlough a portion of its workforce effective immediately, the statement read. The decision to fire so many performers was especially shocking as WWE had just been deemed an essential business by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, meaning the company would be allowed to continue taping live shows from its Florida studios and thus maintain its profitable television contracts with Fox and USA Network. To the state government, McMahon's business was essential and could continue to operate as close to normal as possible, despite a statewide stay-at-home order. But to his employees, McMahon was facing dire financial repercussion due to the pandemic, and severe cuts were necessary in order to keep the company afloat. 
In the same statement that announced WWE plan cuts, the company also wrote that it had, quote, substantial financial resources, both available cash and debt capacity, which currently total approximately half a billion to manage the challenges ahead. With 500 million ready to use, the need to cut so many performers is tougher to justify. Further clouding matters is McMahon's wife, Linda McMahon, runs a pro-Trump super PAC, which has recently committed $18.5 million in Florida markets. On Twitter, fans voiced their displeasure with McMahon and the company and expressed their best wishes to wrestlers who had suddenly lost their jobs. This is kind of the solidification where I think everything all comes into a full circle. You have... The Linda McMahon angle of this, of Donald Trump. You have the essential business. You've seen that Vince McMahon has put a lot of these people in travel arrangements, has been putting them in these contests. And this is why I think it all kind of struck everybody at one single time, why it hurt so much. And why, honestly, I think the biggest thing for a lot of people, this moment seemed very out of left field. It seemed very rash and it seemed very... Fast. It seemed kind of like they they made a decision and really never thought of it. And maybe that's not fair because we're not in these board meetings. We're not in any of these type of conversations. But it felt. And sometimes when there's smoke, there's fire. And I think that's what a lot of fans, who are not just wrestling fans, but a lot of people who are paying attention to entertainment kind of raise a red flag. I agree with you in the way it feels. And people are, the, are entitled to feel the way they want to feel. And it does look bad in the whole if there's smoke, there's fire. Here's my problem with that is you had companies like the big movie studios doing the same thing. You had Disney. We all love Disney. And they went across the board for alluring a lot of people. To me, I don't think it was very much out of left field. This would have normally been a time of year we start letting wrestlers go. Does it suck that we're in a pandemic? Yes. Does that mean you have to completely stop plans? I truly believe no. I think at bottom line, decisions were made that had to be made. Can you have always, can you go about it a better way? Of course. Can you have waited a few more weeks? Maybe we really don't know. I, you know, for a failing wrestling business in general is a dying business when it comes to its TV. And if they tell me, you know, we've always been saying they need to cut their roster. And I think the biggest thing I'm upset about is not what they did this week. I think what they did this week and the last two days, a lot of businesses are doing and will continue to do. I don't blame them on that. I blame them more for six months ago when a lot of these people wanted out of their contracts. On this list that we just mentioned, there was about 12 of them that wanted out of their contracts and had opportunity to at least get a contract somewhere else. Well, they decided no, and to let them go now and only pay them the 90 days, we don't know if this pandemic will be over in 90 days, we hope. But if there's only two major companies going around, you're talking about maybe a handful, two handfuls of jobs out there. Now, compared to back then when you could have built up a little savings. You could have done a little more. I think we're going to the future. We're going to see that they're going to have every wrestling company is going to have to keep their roster small. And we're not going to be able to hoard this talent anymore because the money just won't be there. I think one of the big issues that we're seeing right now is the fact that there isn't a union in professional wrestling. And I know it goes against anything that is professional wrestling. But here's the fact, right? There's a lot of businesses. I understand when it comes to this conversation, there's a lot of businesses that people want to have a nuanced conversation about what should be unionized, what isn't unionized. And I understand there's certain people who love unions who don't love unions. I understand that it's a more complicated conversation, especially for the average American, the average worker. And this conversation is kind of the, a microcosm of what's going on in society right now. We weren't prepared for this, and we there wasn't any protection for the working class for the backbone of these companies, of these corporations that make a lot of money. And I think we've come to a time where with a lot of releases, and even though this would normally have happened, we know the post-WrestleMania cuts. We know the winter cuts. We know these things happen. The difference is this seems not only out of left field because of the state that we're in, that there isn't a rush for it. I think one of the the reasons it's going to be long-lasting even after all these performers get back on their feet, hopefully, is that they're independent contractors that aren't employees. They don't have health benefits. But yet, you can't be an independent contractor and be told that you can't work somewhere else. That's not how a lot of this works. So I think we're going to get to a time where SAG-AFTRA 
or a lot of these different unions that work with actors and stuntmen are going to look at professional wrestling. And I think that's a bubble that I don't think a lot of companies can handle. No, I agree with you on that sense where I think no matter what, we're going to have to look at the situation after. The problem I have also is WWE is like, I love it and you love it. And we're specifically talking about WWE. It has always been a very sketchy company. Vince Man has always been a very sketchy person. Their business model has always been out of there. And I think the problem is they've never tried to be anything else. They've always kind of like, from what you hear from all the shoots, from all the news, even from Triple H, is they're not pretending to be this, you know, we're going to give you a job and take care of you. It, it is very much a doggy, we'll give you a chance, but if you don't succeed, you're on your own type of environment. And it has been for since it started. So I guess for me, I'm a little less shocked that they would do something like this because it's definitely a move they always have. And again, I compare a lot to Disney doing the exact same thing, but we don't talk about the Disney one as much, maybe because they have millions more employees across a lot of different ventures from their movies to their TV to their parks. But we're talking about companies that are, a lot of companies are doing this still. And for us to be surprised, I think is unwarranted compared to upsets though. Well, I think a lot of it has to deal with the way the culture has changed though. It's the same reason why we want college athletes to get paid. It's because we see these big stock owned corporations that have the executives make a lot of money and then the very bottom tier aren't making anything. That they're, they're the ones driving the revenue and that they don't see a lot of big of the pie. And the fact that they could control you, let's say like you're the revival, right? And you're just making whatever the minimum is, but yet you can't do any type of outside booking. We're not using you. We don't plan on using you, but we're not going to let you go somewhere else. There is something in a capitalistic world that that WWE has made its money on, on its doggy dog, to then turn around and do that. It's, it's, it's not a free market. And it's the same reason we are seeing the college sports, the NCAA kind of crumble. It is the reason why the NBA is one of the stronger leagues because the players have a union that they control. It's the same reason why baseball has such a great union because they don't play that game when it, when it comes to the owners. The NFL really gets screwed. When it comes to new CBAs, collective bargaining agreement for all you who don't understand is the deal in which a league plays on. So sometimes they're five-year deals, sometimes they're 10-year deals to basically say the league is open for this amount of years. And the NFL struggles a lot because they have a shorter window. You know, they're only in the pros for what, Alex? What's the average? Three and a half years, right? You only yeah. have that long. So the window is shorter. That means the owners have much more of, of leverage. It's the same thing in wrestling. Vince McMahon has all the leverage. And that is a problem that I think a lot of people are noticing right now. Yeah, I agree with that. But you also got to look that on this list we have in front of me right here, a majority of these people re-signed contracts in the last year or two. So, you know, look at, let's talk about the revival. They re-signed a major contract knowing who they were working for. Being independent contractors, you have to hold some sort of self-responsibility, I believe. And a year ago, when you were almost done, you chose to re-sign knowing what was knowing the company we're working for so to me it's kind of hard like yes hindsight sucks but a lot of these people knew who they were going to work for took that chance anyway and now that it's gone the worst thing we've ever could have expected to me it's it, again at the bottom line this is the business world it is the fault you put yourself at and you do have choices sometimes and not all of these people did but a lot of these people did have choices and you know, I, but the problem is, I think, against myself, the people that have the choices will remain having those choices. A lot of these people are going to sign up with AEW. Those will be the handful are going to get some money coming in compared to a, some of these people on this list who, if they didn't do a nice, you know, nesting egg, they're almost screwed. One of the things that's upsetting a lot of fans is knowing that it was $4 million that was a, approximately saved. That is what some, most of the reports are saying that was saved throughout all of these firings, right? And I think the big problem is knowing full well how much a lot of these other superstars got paid over the last year. Now, I'm not one to try to take money out of somebody else's pocket. I don't believe in that. If Goldberg is worth $4 million combined for his WrestleMania and his Saudi Arabia appearance, good on him. If I were worth $2 million to make two appearances, I want to get paid that. That's not the you argument. Agree. The argument is if you could pay Goldberg that amount of money, that means you could pay everybody else. 
Nobody's going hungry at WWE executive boards. That is the problem I think a lot of Americans are struggling with right now. It's at the top, moving down. Whether you're in the NFL, MLB, you're working for Walgreens, you work for Walmart, Amazon, it does not matter. The problem is, from top to bottom, you have a lot of people who are trying to hurt all this money and gather all these money like little goblins. When that doesn't need to be the case, if you're talking about jumpstarting the economy, if you're talking about good faith, if you're talking about having the hindsight of moving forward, it's not just professional wrestlers who lost jobs, executives lost jobs, trainers lost jobs, referees lost jobs. That this is who knows how much of the crew that they're not disclosing lost jobs. These are what what's been reported, and this is happening across not only America but across the world. And I think this is a reflection of society. Finally, it's to the time where I can really drive home that point. And you've heard me say it a lot. This is a mirror to society. You're seeing it everywhere. You're seeing sports. You're seeing college sports tell us what well, we expect to have spring football. We expect to do this because it's their bottom line. Nobody can tell you when or if this is going to be done. We can hope for, you know, August. We can hope for July. We can hope for May. The bottom line is we just found out that there's a report going out right now that Los Angeles could be looking into all the way next year of public gatherings of thousands of people, especially. Guess where and WrestleMania? Then you have the same re- Sorry to interrupt, but then you have the same report saying – we're going to have Miami open up in two weeks. Absolutely, because it's going state to state. But we have WrestleMania going to be in L.A. in the brand new stadium. Who's to say everything is going to be done in the infrastructure? Can you get people working there? And here's the honest thing I want sports fans to understand. And, you know, obviously, sports helps my business. I love sports, though. This is why I got into, into said business. Can anybody believe that in the next, let's just say, six months... They're going to let people into arenas. Will you be comfortable in arenas in six months? I think that's the question. And I think you bring it up. And I'll agree with you on half. Will they let people in arenas? Yes. I think we are going to move completely too fast as a country. I think we're going to sugarcoat over this whole thing. And I think we're going to be out in the open a lot sooner. Will people show up is the question. I don't think, are they going to let people? I think they're going to let people, honestly, in my opinion, June. Maybe middle of May even. I truly believe that. Are people going to feel comfortable by, let's say, August or October? I, that's tough. That's a tough one. I still don't know. If someone gave you Cubs playoff tickets right now, I don't know. Like, I can't tell you that. But I truly believe the option will be there. And we're going to have to see as a society what people do. So now moving forward, I think a lot of people are asking questions about how operations are going to be ran from sports organizations, from movie companies, from TV productions, from sports entertainment world. They want to know what's going to happen. And I think this is a bad look moving forward for the company. I think there's a potential danger if you're Vince McMahon and anybody who's on that board of maybe unionization from the performers. I think there's a chance where you're going to have to draw back when it comes to live touring. I think this might be the bubble in which live television really either comes back or it dies out and I don't know if mo- if companies are going to be willing to invest billions of dollars like they did before knowing full well that you may not get anything back in that investment in a blink of an eye if one person sneezed on another and the entire entire sports world fell when Rudy Gobert did that and like that's how easy it was so I, I think that there's a lot of dangers if you're somebody like Vince McMahon no, I completely agree with that. It's a tough it's a tough call, like you said, like who's gonna really want to endorse this? Who's gonna be ready, honestly? And then you look at something else, like let me ask you, what what does it tell you that WWE ratings went up yesterday for NXT after this whole thing? Does that mean, well, well, maybe that was just a little quick snippet? Do we wait to see SmackDown's rating? Because what we learned from yesterday, just if you looked at the ratings, was okay, we have the worst news day, bad publicity of WWE. They beat AEW and they went up from last week. Is that people's curiosity or is that just maybe this is happening so much in big corporations, people are kind of going with it? I think it's totally morbid curiosity. I think it's it's a bunch of little factors. Agreed. You have you know bad weather hitting the Midwest and obviously down south. So you have not only do you have this quarantine, you have people who are literally locked down right now. And then you have the morbid curiosity of like, what are they going to do? 
what what kind of show are they gonna put on? Like, you have the nerve to be tweeting us things and and hyping things up after people lost their jobs. Like, I under and here's the thing, right? Like, the show goes on. That's the one thing we learned about the WWE. They've literally seen a man die in the ring, and the show will go on, and that's what they will do. And I think the wrestling fan base knows that. And I think the wrestling fan base is kind of like that. They'll carry that negativity and that energy and that. That, that sour taste in their mouth much longer than the company will. This company will move forward. Just like the NFL where a running back could tear their ACL and they'll move forward to the third round backup rookie. You know, like there's... But no offense, they have to. Absolutely. No, like if they don't, now they're going to let go of a lot of these people instead of just the majority of them. You know, like I said, on a wrestling standpoint, these were people we didn't see on TV. So show-wise, the show's going to look the exact same for now. Those tapings are doing, it's going to look the exact same. I think you're more hitting on the head of maybe more, no more live events. They're not going to be able to afford to hoard talent. But show-wise, it's going to look the exact same. Media-wise, it's going to look the exact same. And that's kind of a scary thought of what what is there to do? They kind of have to just keep going and take it on the chin. And maybe that's why they do it all at once. Because in a week, you know, you get a good smackdown. That's what the news is going to be talking about. Look at Disney. Disney's on everyone's mind because, oh, yeah, we fired a lot of our people. A lot of people aren't working, but we're going to give you more on Disney+. Plus. You can do a sing-along. Look at all this positive that buried the negative. Now, the only positives that you can gather from this is a lot of guys will go away, and some of them will come back better. I don't know for how long the WWE has a track record of sometimes getting these guys over it again. Sometimes they just let them swander again. Like, it's just, it is what it is when it comes to such a big company. I think moving forward, though, that you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of consolidation in this company. I think you're going to see a lot of consolidation, a lot of different operations. I don't think this is just in the sports and entertainment world. I think this happens in the sports world. And I think what's really dangerous, and here's my question. And maybe you can answer this, Alex, is how does sports with no live crowd jumpstart the economy? You know, like you could tell me that we wanted to maybe bring back up morale, maybe to ease us back to whatever the new normal is. But you can't tell me that, you know, the average mom in South Carolina or the single dad in Chicago or, you know, the college student in San Diego is going to benefit financially from sports being back on television, from sports entertainment being back on television. I can't tell you yes or no either way. I can't tell you we live in a very social media heavy where that kind of runs our economy to a sense. When we look at the YouTube money and the Twitter money and Facebook with all of this and our TV, I truly, I do think in some small aspects it would help our economy, not to the extent of, getting us out of any sort of recession we'd be in. But to think it wouldn't help at all, I think is underselling it. I think, like you said, all those people, maybe financially, they'll talk about it. And the more you talk about it, that endorses money. And I think that money can help slightly, not as much as we would need it to, but who's to say how much we're going to need it to at the time? My problem is it's not it's not efficient enough or sufficient enough, though, to it, to tell me that we're we need to have – football on you know we just found out as of this recording that right now star star in the von nfl miller. Yep. von miller has covid19 this, this is all it takes i mean nobody i will never forget the night that rudy gobert was confirmed with covid19 and the entire world stopped the nba world was put on pause and then the rest like a trickle down effect and I'm in one of the most surreal moments that anybody who is a sports fan, anybody who loves any type of television will remember the moment that the world shut down at that moment. That was the moment it became real. We all found out about Tom Hanks right after that. This, And to think, though, that Dana White was talking about fighting in an island or fighting on, on a Native American resort and that we were going to have these this big fight between Tony Ferguson and Justin Gagey when it was originally supposed to be Tony Ferguson versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. For what? Who's making money? Other than these corporations, other than yeah. ESPN and the UFC, which is their prerogative. But in, in a world in which people we know, family members, are making minimum wage working as essential employees essential workers is it the best look is it the best look moving forward 
How how hungry are we for content is what I'm asking a sports fan. Are you willing to go I back to danger? I think there's a lot of America out there who aren't as affected as you think they are that are hungry for content. A lot of I think there's a, a lot of this country wants it back. And I, I think if you tell if they announce that they will start doing games without an audience, I think you'd see. I think you'd be shocked at the reaction they get. Well, I believe moving forward, it's going to end up being all the leagues will come back to us. I don't mm-hmm. think audiences, fans will be allowed in buildings the rest of 2020. I don't think it will be allowed in the beginning of 2021. I think the first time you'll see major people back together will be maybe the spring of 2021. I don't think it will be before then. I think the reason why a lot of this is happening is or and these pushes are going on is because you can't tell society at one time. We're on lockdown for six months. It will be a very small trickle down effect it'll start with people going back to work then it'll start with okay yeah sports games can happen you can't have a baseball game you could have 150 people in a in a sporting event in an arena but that be, that just means that it the away team the home team and health staff and maybe announcers like that's what this becomes what happens to announcers are announcers now doing it from remote does Corey graves need to be at uh birmingham alabama or can he do it from orlando these are questions well, that we're going to have to find look out. Look at Jim Ross. You don't have to be there since it's all pre-recorded anyway. And that's right now. Moving forward, is that going to be the case? Like, are we going to be, be in a, are we going to be in a point where they're recording two episodes of Raw at a time? One where it's two in front of a live crowd, but one that's actually live to air, and one that's being recorded for the next day? I don't know in a social media world. But all these have to be on the table right now. I think th- I agree with you. I hope that it's not some next year, and I really think it's better for us. Here's my here's what I truly believe. I think the country goes back to normal faster than we think. I think it's going to be a terrible idea. I think people are going to run out to be in big groups. I think people still to this day, I think until those death numbers start going up in that middle range, middle age range, it's not getting taken as serious. I truly think as soon as they start opening things, people will go out. Tons of people going out, and I think it's going to set us back even more. In a perfect world, I would say what you said and. No, slow down, wait, let's get it done and then get back to normal. I think our country, and it's been kind of a proven track record that we're going to jump ahead of it. We're going to jump the gun, and it's either going to be terrible or really bad. And we even heard about all the major heads of sports having conversations with the president. And it was even Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, who brought up that sports are coming back, but chances are there won't be with fans. And I think that's... If it comes down to anything, and I know a lot of people who follow me on social media know this, that I believe you follow the trail of the billionaires. Billionaires don't like losing money, and that's what's happening right now. I think the NBA, I think MLB have handled this a lot better than WWE have. I think they have the benefits of more money, more spotlights, and more heat on them if they don't do the right thing. I think their commodity of the players know their value much more and have actual value when it comes to decision making than performers in the WWE. I wonder if this dies down or if this heat continues over the next few weeks. And it's a hard thing for WWE. It's because, like you said, when you're comparing it to the Dallas Mavericks and the Chicago Bears, and then some people want to compare it, well, I consider it more like a Disney situation. But And if you compare it to a Disney, okay, they're not really monsters. They're just ruthless business people then if you look at it like you said a a sports organization who handled them much better now you start seeing the flaws so it's hard for WWE because what do we compare it to it is sports entertainment is it more disney or is it more the dallas mavericks and that's a conversation that is always going to kind of be around professional wrestling is where does it lie it's definitely much more than than actors because they live the gimmick a little bit differently than, let's say, an actor does. But it is like acting. It's also definitely stuntman work and professional athleticism. So it's a conversation that's always going to be around. And when you have sports like boxing and the UFC in mixed martial arts that kind of incorporated a lot of professional wrestling-isms, I think that's why that line gets blurred. And it's a conversation, good brother, that's for a different time, for a different show on this network. But I had an awesome time, good brother, uh, having this conversation about a very serious subject matter here on Sports from the Couch on Mercado Airwaves. Our guest today is the one, the only, from the podcast, 
the good brothers. He is a national champion on one of the great programs that you can see here on Cheer on Netflix. Two Navarro, time. Two time national champion, the good brother Alex Mercado. Alex, before we let you go, a fun one before we get out of here though on Sports from the Couch. An article came out about top jerseys in the NFL and it got me thinking about what makes a cool, good, nice looking jersey in professional sports. And I'm going to put your feet to the fire. In your opinion, what makes a nice, cool, smooth-looking professional jersey? You know, to me, I think it all depends because I think every sport's a little different. I think hockey jerseys are the coolest ones because they're very logo-heavy, and there's a lot of cool logos. And I'm not a big hockey fan, but I think hockey jerseys are the coolest style, and the logos are cool. Then you look at the MLB, and it's more about your color pattern and your alternate uniforms and how you kind of blend everything in your hat, your one logo on your hat. I think NBA has some really nice jerseys. NBA is more about the lettering. How does that lettering come out? How does that lettering look? And I think you look at NFL and it falls kind of in the middle of everything of, well, I need the colors to look good and the lettering needs to be crisp. The logo isn't necessarily as important because it's going to be a little smaller until you get to the helmet. It's interesting you say that because I think in the NFL, my top three jerseys are the Raiders, the Bears, and like the Packers. Because I think they all have tradition. Very, it's it's tradition, but they're all very slick. They all have very strong colors, and like I think they're all pretty cool. I know a lot of people like the Dallas Cowboys, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like, there's a the lot Eagles of are good. the Eagles. You have the San Diego Chargers. Excuse me, the LA Chargers. They're always going to be San oh, Diego geez. to me. Those are really nice jerseys. I don't like Carolina, Broncos. Jacksonville Broncos. I really like. I think the Broncos are probably cooler when they go through their throwback orange ones with the blue helmets. But you and I grew up with the John Elway heavy dark blue ones, yeah. and those are really cool. There's a lot of great jerseys. I like the Texans. They're very generic, though, especially after Same. 9-11. But, you know, the, the, the bowl looks really cool. The Giants are really classic. Uh, the Patriots are okay. Like, the NFL has a lot of cool jerseys, but the ones that suck really suck. You know what's very unfortunate is, let's say, like, the Tennessee Titans. They have beautiful colors. Their jerseys suck, though. Yeah, it just doesn't, the pattern doesn't flow on that. It's almost too much sometimes. And then in baseball, I think a lot of it comes down to what looks good on television. Dodgers, Cubs, the White Sox have beautiful jerseys. Red Sox, the, Yankees. Red Sox, Mets. Yankees, yeah. So there's a lot of cool ones in there. And in the NBA, the, even though there's a lot more colorful ones, you have the Lakers, the Bulls. I think Miami are really cool modern-day jerseys. Uh, there's a bunch of Celtics. That's really known for their alternate jerseys, too, and their special occasions. Like They're very fan-friendly about we're going to put on a nice jersey just for you guys for a couple of games. And again, the NBA, you really appreciate that because you do get a lot more variety. It's always really fun to be able to do some some type of a conversation about sports jerseys. But good brother, thank you so much for joining us here on Sports from the Couch. Any final thoughts about this whole conversation that happened after these WWE firings? You know, I think I'm just going to a general statement. I said it to my kids. I had uh, virtual classes with the cheerleaders earlier. And I, I heard it on the internet earlier. And I think it was well said of, these are weird times, and it's okay to feel weird. I think some people get scared of, I don't know how to feel right now. I don't know. It's all too much. And I think that's okay. It's okay not to know how to feel. It's okay to take a second and be like, I really don't understand everything. Why is this happening? I'm uncomfortable. And I think it's okay to feel that way. And, you know, just find some pleasant distractions or something to keep your mind occupied. Get creative. Get passionate about something. Try to find, like I said, it's not just, hey, let's be positive and positive. It's find some sort of outlook to go to, and it is okay not to feel okay. He is a two-time national champion from Navarro. Two-time? He is the host of the pop culture podcast, The Good Brothers. He is Alex Mercado. You can follow him on Twitter at Mercado21. Alex on Instagram at Mercado2121. The podcast is at Good Brothers Pod. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on Sports from the Couch on the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media, on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. Give us a like, rate, review, and share us wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Thank you so much, good brother. Please take care of yourself. We really appreciate whenever you join us here on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I couldn't wait to talk about this. Hey, guys. Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. We want to thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network. And if you want to see what we're up to outside of the station, please follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. You can follow the good brother Alex Mercado on Twitter at Mercado21Alex and on Instagram at Mercado2121. The lovely Nicole Mancha is on all social media platforms at typing when tipsy. 
You can follow the network on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. Our pop culture show, The Good Brothers, on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Our true crime shows on Instagram at Murder Mysteries and More. And of course, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all our videos on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333 or by searching Mercado Airwaves Network. We play video games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. And of course, you could support our network by finding a tier just for you, whether you want early access, you want to be part of polls, you want to win contests prizes by visiting us at patreon.com slash mercado airwaves and we really appreciate it wherever you get your favorite podcast to like rate review and share us and please spread the word for the good brother alex mercado for the lovely nicole mancha i'm mike mercado thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network